I want to talk about our justice system today. Black lives matter. A thousand people died from police encounters in 2019. 54% of those people were people of color. 26% were black. And 1% of those officers were charged, according to Gonzaga University. Abram Kendi recites Bill Clinton's 1995 speech that white people see violence as having a black face. Let's talk about the Kyle Rittenhouse case. 17-year-old white male killed two protesters in Kenosha, Wisconsin with an AR-15 rifle, claiming that he had gone there that night to protect people's businesses and to be a medic. He got a $2 million bail and he got out of juvenile detention center a few months after being in due to supporters on the outside. He claims self-defense, not guilty to first degree intentional homicide, first degree reckless homicide, first degree attempted intentional homicide, and two counts of first degree reckless endangerment. He killed Joseph Rosenbaum, who was homeless, had addiction issues, sexually abused as a child, and was going and had previously gone through intimate partner violence with his fiance, who said during the trial that she had wanted to work things out with him. And when he was attending the protest, he had just left the hospital due to a suicide attempt. And the bag with his belongings from the hospital that he threw at Rittenhouse ultimately ended his life. He was then shot four times. Anthony Huber, 26, was bipolar, had a history of domestic violence with his siblings, and Jacob Blake was his friend. It later came out that Rittenhouse had posed for a picture with the Proud Boys, a far-right extremist group. He's now acquitted of all of these charges due to his self-defense claim. Jacob Blake, the reason that these protests ensued, was a black man that was shot seven times in the back by a white police officer in front of his three children. He's now paralyzed from the waist down. This happened on August 23rd, 2020. The officers will not be charged for what happened. And the reasoning for this violence was because there was a, wi a warrant out for his arrest on charges of third degree assault, criminal trespass, and disorderly conduct. Uh, the woman who made the complaint called 911 to say that he was at her home. Police then said that they were responding to a domestic complaint and tried to arrest him. He was refusing arrest and they tried to use a taser twice on him before shooting, but as he got into his car, that's when he was hurt. His lawyer said that he was there breaking up a fight between two women. And the sex assault was later dropped because the woman who made the complaint did not cooperate with prosecution after he was shot. So a couple of things here. One, we don't care about bodies or victims that are disabled. Two, we don't care about black men in this country. And three, there's another case ongoing in Kenosha, Wisconsin with Crystal Kaiser, 17 year old black female. She got out on a $400,000 bond and was in jail for two years until that happened. 
She killed her abuser who was sex trafficking her and other girls. His name was Valer, 34. He had been under investigation and was arrested in 2018 for sexually assaulting, but then for sexual assault, and then was let out on bail, even though police had proof, video evidence, that he was sexually abusing black girls in the area. Sorry, my notes are all over the place. Uh, women serve longer sentences for killing their abusers, 15 years on average, to abusive men killing their victims, two to six years, according to domesticshelters.org. And, mind you, women who plea self-defense still get this amount of jail time. More than two-thirds of state court judges are male, and there's this mentality that women are not supposed to be violent, and victim blaming is still prevalent in that they must have done something wrong to deserve it. And a lot of times when women come to court, they don't fit into our idea of what a victim looks like. They don't look as disheveled or something as we would think somebody would be in the victim in this scenario. I also want to um, go back to Kendi. Uh, he talked about how America has controlled, lynched, segregated, and incarcerated black folks over the centuries due to um, white people, especially inherently thinking that they're violent. And he goes on to prove in the same chapter six on body that poverty is the real reason that higher crime rates exist and it's not a black on black problem. I also wanna talk about Khalif Browder who was a 16 year old black male who was arrested for a robbery he did not commit, spent three years on Rikers Island, two of those years in solitary confinement, waiting a trial that seemed like it was never gonna come. During his time there, he was brutally beat by inmates and officers. Video evidence has proven that. And after he got out, later on committed suicide. So let's unpack this. Kyle killed two people off of any charges. Crystal killed her abuser, still awaiting trial. Khalif did nothing wrong, ended up in Rikers for three years, killed himself. And then we have Jacob Blake, whose charges were dropped and was shot seven times just because he resisted arrest. Begs the question, whose bodies are important? And Kyle got off because he's maintaining the status quo. The system isn't broken. It's operating as it was meant to be.